Tonight's first period on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. And by Papa John's. The day after every Flyers win, get 50% off your online order at PapaJohns.com using promo code FLYERS. Here in Buffalo, first Niagara Center. The Flyers only visit this building this season. It's the second game between these teams this year. Flyers winning back in Philadelphia 4-1. to one. And Reed had a couple goals in that game. Let's take a look at our Kia starting goaltenders. Steve Mason back between the pipes for the Flyers. He picked up that loss Saturday at home against the Tampa Bay Lightning. We're kind of surprised Jonas Enroth is starting. We expected to see Ryan Miller. With the little Swede, and I mean little, he's listed at 5'10", he's more like 5'8". He's only won one game this season, so he's a true backup. He gets the start for the Sabres. This has been a victim of a lack of support this year. So we're underway. The Flyers in their road white jerseys, the alternate third uniforms for the Sabres. The blue tops yellow as well in there, and numbers that are pretty hard to see as the Sabres clear the puck in. Steve Mason cuts it off. Plays it high off the glass. It bounces off of Wayne Simmons. Kept it at the point. Weber is shot. Mike Weber, the defenseman, was blocked. Now it bounces back out for a shot and a glove save by Mason. They're just 32 seconds in as he had to deny Cody Hodgson. Flyers head coach Craig Berube wasn't very happy after Sunday's loss in New York. He said, we just weren't ready. He also said we didn't play fast enough in the first period. We were slow in everything that we did. So the Flyers are trying to dedicate themselves to having a much better start. And the Buffalo Sabres have the lowest goal totals in the first period of any team in the NHL. So this could be a good place to get a first period untracked the way they want to. Saber combinations at the top of your screen put together by Ted Nolan as Matt Molson flings it deep into the Philadelphia zone. Colbert able to backhand that up the wall. It went out to center, hammered back in. Would have been offside if the Sabres touched the puck. So the Flyers, plenty of time here. Michael Roffel will start back toward the Buffalo zone. And he'll push the puck in as the Flyers will change. But either Cavalier jumps off the bench and goes after the puck. The Sabres come up with it. The Sabres not only haven't scored many goals in the first, they've given up a lot. They have just been a terrible first period team. And the Flyers really want to jump on that here in this one. Tonight. I think at the same time we should point out the Sabres should not be discounted. I mean they're much playing much better than their overall record right now. They're, they're dangerous not. because they work very very hard. They haven't lost in regulation here at home in their last eight games. Loose puck into the Philadelphia zone. Shen tying up the man. Mason takes care of the puck. Waits for the whistle. It finally arrives and play is stopped. And while they untangle we will take a look at our Virtual scratches from the lineup for the Flyers. Zach Ronaldo remains out, of course, as he will for six weeks or so, that high ankle sprain. Gustafson is healthy, but out. Steve Downey remains a healthy scratch. Four injured players for the Sabres, including Drew Stafford. Ted Nolan hoping to get him back, perhaps, as early as tomorrow night when they visit Toronto. Ted Nolan brings such great energy. Good to see him back behind an NHL bench. Tyler Myers also on that scratch list, serving the third and final game of his suspension for a hit on Dinah Zubris. And they'll get the big defenseman back tomorrow in Toronto for sure. So they might get uh, Myers as well as Stafford back for that game tomorrow night, but the Flyers do not have to deal with them here this evening. They get on Jamie McBain by Jay Rosehill as the Flyers' fourth line gets its first shot. Andavelli comes up with the puck, shoved to the wall, got it back to Rose Hill. It hopped over his stick. He goes back to try to get it back. And finally, Buffalo will gain control. The former Carolina defenseman McBain will throw it ahead. He's got Brian Flynn moving to the neutral zone. And from the red line, he'll pump it into the Philadelphia end. Mark Strike takes a look as he goes back to the bucket. He tips it to Nick Grossman. Grossman ahead for Rose Hill. He was checked, knocked down, dives to push it through center and down the ice. But this will be icing on Philadelphia. Gives us a chance to go inside the glass to Steve Coates. Thanks very much, Jimmy. And uh, 
One member of this Buffalo Sabre team that's very sorely missed tonight is Tyler Myers, the former number one pick, but happens to be six foot eight. And you know, when you lose a guy like that, it hurts. But this is how he is missing this game, is he just absolutely drills Dinah Zubras with the elbow. You see Zubras' head go flying back, and Myers sitting out a three-game suspension right now. Game three here tonight. And Myers is a guy that uh, has had his ups and downs even this year. But uh, is important if this team is to ever get things turned around. And Veldi moving the puck out to the neutral zone. It's cut off by the Sabres. Alexander Sulzer, the defenseman, he gets it to Marcus Foligno. And Foligno will back into the Philadelphia line. It bounces off of Grossman. Boychek dropped it back, and now play whistled on a delayed offside. And we look at Ted Nolan, who took over early in the season. The club has a much improved record under him, even though they're still in last place in the Atlantic Division, but they're actually playing better. Hard to believe when you see those numbers, but they are playing better of late. They're misleading. I mean, they're last in the NHL. They're last by 10 points in the Eastern Conference. But a much improved team under Ted Nolan. And look, pretty simple. You can't teach skill, and there's not a lot of skill in this Buffalo team, but you can teach teams to check, and you can hold them accountable for working to 100% of their abilities, and that's what Ted Nolan's doing. In their eight-game streak at home in which they've gone 6-0-2, they have not allowed more than two goals in any of those games. So they're playing defense, and play defense by checking. Here's Giroux. There's a penalty coming up here for the Buffalo Sabres. For a check, and a late call as Mason goes to the bench, and there's your whistle. So the Flyers will get an early power play here, a tripping infraction. Your referees are Gord Dwyer and West McCall. Penalty number three, two minutes tripping. Let's take a look at it. Bezik that's going to be able to pick this one up. It's just Drew trying to make a move by him, but watch the stick. Catches Drew as he's moving by, so good opportunity to get that good start that you guys were talking about for the Philadelphia Flyers on their first power play of this one. Caught him low, right coach, he caught yep. around the knees. First round pick, Mark Pezik, will sit. The Flyers' power play on the road, of course, has been a major weapon this year. And the number one unit out to start, Giroux, Hartnell, Simmons up front. Team it in at Voracek, manning the points. And they drop the puck. And the Flyers get control. Here is Team it in. Here's Giroux with the double screen set up. He flipped it wide. It bounces out the other side. Borchek spots it. Backhands it around behind the net off of Simmons. Giroux hustles in to get after it. And does get it back to Timonino. Oh, but Timonin has to play that in the neutral zone as it bounced away from him. There's your McDonald's power play payoff contestant. Flyers power play overall in the year. 17th ranked. Much better though on the road. Here is Simmons getting to the puck. Simmons sandwiched along the boards. Cardinal leaves the puck along. They get it out to Timonen. Timonen to Giroux. Takes a look. Finds Hartnell for a shot. Didn't get all of it. They drifted wide. Now Voracek. Voracek looking. And now we'll go back to Timonen. Simmons sets up in front of the net. Voracek cutting to the slot. Deals to Giroux. Back to Timonen. And now it's Giroux at the angle. Nobody wanted to fire right there. Now it's back to Timonen at the point. Across to Voracek. Down low. Hartnell the redirection. Save and Roth. And no further play. Well, there's a lot of opportunity to the outside because Scotty Hartnell's creating a lot of havoc for the box because what he does, he gets himself into the middle. Now, right here, you're going to see him go to the net with Simmons. There are the boys, once again, right in front to be able to redirect that puck, and that's a great, great shot getting the puck along the, the ice building. Well, the Sabres, too, Coach, here, are so aggressive on their kill. You notice that both Hartnell and Simmons were open in front. So... There will be people open, and the, whoever is the puck carrier, the puck possessor, has to watch for that, and often they will be right in front. A big part of the Sabres' improved play of late has been their penalty kill. They've lost 18 of their last 19. But they've been aggressive in doing that. So try to exploit that. Here's Stride moving up. Drops it back for Matt Reed. Now Cavier with a pass, but the play is offside at the Buffalo line. There's the run they're on. Eight straight games getting points here at home. Only the Ducks and Penguins, who are both on incredible runs at home, have longer streaks. And you see the defense has been the key. The good penalty kill and also just one goal out of each of the last four, as I said earlier, two or less in all eight of the games. Kenny Nolan said he doesn't match lines here. 
Things that, you know, if you're good enough to play in the National Hockey League, you should be able to handle anybody. Your fourth line should be able to handle the first line of the other team. There's Mark Strike with the puck. Flyers with still a half minute to work with on this power play, the second unit. Trying to find a way to score late with the man advantage. The sling shot pass to Reed, who steps in across the line. Reed takes it around behind the net, and then he swarmed upon and knocked to the ice. Shen could not get that puck free, and it's cleared all the way down by the Sabres. So time only to begin one more rush with this man advantage. Strike starts up. Six goals now in the season, leading the Flyer defense score. Dropped it off for the Cave, who tips it to himself. And then does so again into the quarter, but Weber got his way and kept him from getting to it. Offles in after that puck along with Shen. Now Lecavier got it back to Strike. Strike right along the line to Mazaros. Andre Mazaros holding on to the puck, now wristing one wide of the net. Shen trying to track it down. He does. Graydon Shen shoved to the wall by Weber. And the puck cleared over the head of Luke Shen and down the ice. Mazaros has to rotate back. Mason will steer the puck to him. And now Mazaros backhanding it ahead. Michael Raffle gets the legs moving, then fires it diagonally into the Buffalo zone. Nav is back to play it around the boards. It makes its way to rookie Zemgis Gergensen. Latvian will move it through center to make Nav. Off on the left wing, Molson threw it back through the slot. It'll make its way all the way to the other side of the ice. Ennis back behind the cage. Luke Shen gets to it there, but turns it over. Ennis, the steal and the shot, and the blocker save made by Mason. Now oh, they get the puck back to the Sabres. It's Ennis. Diminutive four, but he's slippery as he shows right there. Vandeveld, he got a piece of no, knocks him down. And the Flyers a chance to get the puck, but it's Gergensen's instead. Behind the net, Ennis. Ennis turns and fires it wide, back around behind the net. In from the point comes McBain. Sabres set up, chop now in the offensive zone, centering it. Molson was there in his office, just couldn't hang on to that pass. That had trouble written all over it, but the Flyers lived to tell about it, and Hall turns it into the Buffalo zone. Played almost seven minutes of this first period. Each team just one shot on goal. Now this will not be icing. Matt D'Agostini with all kinds of speed will cancel on the icing shot. Comes out in front. Hodgson score! Breakdown defensively. Hodgson, dangerous player to be that alone. And he beats Mason. It's 1-0 Buffalo. What a move by Hodgson. But given that much time, there are a lot of guys that can come up with that move. Steve Mason was left to fend for himself on this play. Looked like the Flyers were back in good shape, but Braden Coburn couldn't get to the puck first, and that was a centering pass with nobody covering Hodson. And what happened is that Hodson's going to come late, and he just jumps right into the middle of a couple of Flyer players, and they don't get to him in time. And we had talked about Hodson in our open. You don't want to let guys like that by themselves in front of your goalie, and boy, he nailed it. Picks up his ninth goal of the year. He had not scored in his last nine. It really goes further back than that because he missed eight games in a row with an injury. So it's been a while between goals for Cody Hodgson, but he is a key. If Buffalo is going to score any goals, they've got, they've got to get him going. He has 21 points now in the year, which is the second best on the team. He's missed 10 games. The Flyers again have to battle from behind. They were hoping to get the jump in this game, but it didn't happen. Now they have to try to tie this back up. Here is Strike. Deliberately towards center. Get off the stick of Hart. Nobody did not penetrate the Buffalo zone. Sabres steal it. Miss Omar will send it into the Philadelphia zone. Flynn pursues with Couturier. The jam for the puck. It bounces free. Sabres win the battle. Get it back out to Sulzer. Cross ice. We'll flip one that's off the shin pad in front. And Simmons will just bank it out to the neutral zone. Past the eight-minute mark of this first period. Sabres coming right back in. Flynn, angle shot, batted away by Mason at the side of the net. Now it's Reed ahead to Couturier, whose line pass is intercepted by Weber. And Sabres have it back. Cross ice pass goes through Flynn. Loose by former flyer Billy Leno. Leno around Couturier. He's hooked penalty. Got a shot off. It's blocked. And then the Flyers play the puck, but they'll be shorthanded. Hooking will be the call. Sabres have the lead. They'll go to the power play when we return. Andre Mazzaros is going to pick up the first penalty for the Philadelphia Flyers. Sabres ahead to the power play. Billy Leno, we all know about his stick handling ability. Oh, yeah, he's struggling to score goals here. But right here, you're going to see him with a nifty little move to get 
through Couturier, and Mazaros comes from behind him, gets the hook on Leno, and as I mentioned, the first power play for the Buffalo Sabres. Mazaros in the box, Matt Reed out to kill penalties. Uh, it's one of the many things he brings to the table as he comes back into the lineup. There are your numbers. Flyers penalty kill has been solid all the way up to a tie for seventh place. NHL. The Sabres power play has had its struggles. As you would imagine by the fact that they are averaging well below two goals a game this year. A little bit better at home, 15.5%, as opposed to the 13 overall. Here's Couturier. They clear the puck all the way down. Fires had their long streak of successful penalty kills ended in New York. They had gone 26 consecutive. And then they were scored upon in the last power play that the Rangers had in that game. So 26 of the last 27. And they want to try to keep this a one-goal game here. McBain. Move the puck along and the Sabres are set up for the first time. But McBain can't handle that pass. They're up to the back of the neutral zone to get it. Drops it off for Christian Ehrhoff, the veteran defenseman. He turns with the puck and now fires it across ice and they'll move in. Pass tipped away by Tiemann in but bounces back to the Sabres. And they look to make a move in front. And Hutchin was there but couldn't get a lot of stick on that attempt. And the Mason cleared it away. McBain to Hutchin in the corner. That's pressured by Tiemann, it goes all the way across to Erhoff, who flips one in front, redirection, save Mason. Big stop by Mason off of Matt Molson. Remember that one. Molson's so good at getting into that scoring area and then knows what to do with the puck, that's for sure. He is very dangerous in the power play. There's only two players in the NHL over the last five seasons who have more power play goals than Matt Molson. So he is a, a guy who certainly can set up shop there. 16 seconds remain on the Mazaros penalty as the Sabres get the puck in. It passes tipped. Agostini, and now Omar has it. Some time in the power play, and the point is Linus Omar, the former Edmonton Oiler. Very flashy player, but Franz has a little trouble with that. Also, the former Linus Omar. Yes, he's now Linus, according to folks here in Buffalo. So the Flyers kill off another power play, 27 to the last 28. This is still a 1-0 game. We pass the midpoint of the first period. McNabb with a long pass, hoping for D'Agostini, broken up, but then D'Agostini able to dig it away from Hartnell, and he centers it. Airborne puck went off of Felino toward the quarter boards. Strite and Felino battle there. Felino able to control. It's it back to the point. Now will flip it across ice. That's read beautifully by Hartnell, and he'll move the other way. Hartnell racing up, fans and wrist shot. That's definitely a Hartnell down. Now Shen back to Hartnell behind the net. They'll tip the puck to the corner. Luke Shen around behind. It's cut off by Weber. And the Sabres will look to move back the other way. There have been some Hartnell downs and there have been some Hartnell downs. That was definitely one of them. That was all alone by yourself going down. Back out in center. And Weber will go across ice to Seltzer. Then off the stick, Mason will set it up for Braden Coburn. Coburn's check drops it off for Andre Mazaros. Mazaros hits Roffle. Roffle is checked. Overtaken. Sabres get it back. Look to move back quickly in transition with the pass off the back. It's Coburn ahead. Now the pass to Giroux. Giroux moving up. Giroux dangles to the slot. To the back end. Oh, what a save by Enron. He dropped the stick, got the arm out there, and somehow kept that puck out of the net. Flyers keep the puck in the zone toward the slot Drew looking for, but now they say the puck snuck out to center. It was offside going back in. Oh, Drew flat out robbed by Jonas Enron. Well, that guy there came up with the save of the game so far is Paul Drew doing his wizardry, coming here, dropping the shoulder, then coming with the backhand. Look at it, deflects off the defenseman. Actually, it was Atlanta coming back, and then watch Enron. Enron just come right flying across, Billy. Well, Jonas Enroth is just a little guy, but he had about a 38-inch sleeve on that one, and his blocker hand came down perfectly. He lost sight of Giroux in the pile up there for a second and found him just in time. That's one of the best saves all year, no doubt. Well, it makes it even more difficult when you have it redirected like that and you can still respond. So it remains a 1-0 game. Christian Erhoff will flip the puck ahead. Wilson drops it back in the Sabres. They're going to go to the attack again. The shots are 5-2 in favor of Buffalo. They move the puck in. 
Lorenis. Down behind the net. Molson trying to track this down. Couturier pursues. The puck bounces ahead, and there is Le Cavalier. Backhanded across ice in the neutral zone. Matt Reed drops it to Couturier. His shot is blocked off. And Couturier back after it along the boards. It will bounce to Le Cavalier, who tried to center, but that's blocked by Erhoff. Come your way from the first Niagara Center here in downtown Buffalo. Sabres and Flyers. Okay, sports a great crew. Bring you the Flyers. Another road game. They're 27th of the year, right up at the top of the league in terms of road games played. After the Olympic break, Flyers have a lot of home ice play, and that's something that could certainly come into play for them down the stretch. Hops it across to McBain and across the line. Drops it off, sent back through the slot. Now Ott is stripped of the puck by Hartnell. Scott Hartnell moving up. Just push it ahead, hoping for Simmons, who one-hands it into the slot area, but McBain cuts that off. McBain run at by Simmons. The puck bounces free, but D'Agostini jumps to it. And he'll move the puck to the neutral zone. Oxen tips it further. Sabres move it into the Philadelphia zone, but it's cut off by Braden Shen. We'll get to Hartnell. Flyers finishing up a line change here. Hartnell will head off the ice. And Mazzaro starts up. Beat is to Adam Hall. Around behind the net he goes. Weber play it up the boards. The mark is there, but he could not do anything with it. Forced back. And Weber has it. And now it's spun out by Omar all the way down. This will be icing on Buffalo. This team it wins the race to the dot. Well, the Flyers are going to take on the Nashville Predators on Thursday. Game time is 7 p.m., and it just happens to be Super Pretzel, Dollar Pretzel Night. Then the New York Islanders are in town on Saturday for another 7 p.m. start, and there are some really good seats still left, so call now. Come and enjoy the party. Oh, boy. Predators plus Dollar Pretzel Night. Yeah. Yeah. You can certainly hear the excitement in his voice, huh? Coach, he's excited about those pretzels. It's food, isn't it? <laughs> Shot goes wide right off the draw. Tibidin keeps it in behind the net. Right back up toward the point. Flynn got his stick on it. But the Flyers searched him, and now there's a penalty upcoming right along the board. Giroux was hit, and that was spotted. Flyers will get a power play when we come back. Well, the Flyers are going back on the power play thanks to a penalty by Alexander Sulzer of the Buffalo Sabres. Claude Giroux was against the boards and just enough arm extension to be called a cross check. Well, let's take a look at our Geico quote of tonight's game as we look at Sulzer in the penalty box. On a two-game losing streak, this is what Mark Strait had to say. Defensively, the last two games, we didn't play good enough. You got to work really hard in this league without the puck. We didn't do that. And quite frankly, that's what happened on that first goal. Away from the puck, nobody picked up Hodgson, and all of a sudden it's a one nothing hockey game. We've often talked about Kimo Timonen being uh, Mr. Forthright on this team. I think Mark Streit's right there with him. He usually will uh, pinpoint yep. what the problem is. He's not afraid to publicly say what the team did wrong. It comes to being a veteran. The Flyers a chance to even this game up right here as they go to the power play. Kimo Timonen starting up. To Giroux, Giroux in across the line, the right wing dish to Forrest, check, he fed in the shot, still a save made by Enroth with the pad and kick it all the way out to the neutral zone. Here is Timonen. Again back to Giroux. That's how the Flyers like to enter on the power play. Hartnell tipping it back to Giroux, escapes the boards with it to the slot, holds, waits, the pass off of Hartnell, and then he jabs one wide. Go to the corner boards after it. And the puck bounces to Ott, and he's able to shovel it all the way down. Flyers will change units, at least some of them leaving. Giroux isn't because he has the puck. The puck from Mason, he centers, it goes off his gate all the way out to center. And Stroyd has to hustle back to get to it. Drifting back with it as he does so. One and a half remaining in this first period. The Flyers complete their changes, and the pass from Stroyd is tipped high in the air. And they're going to say that Shen beat the puck into the zone offside. We'll get Philly sports news and scores when you're on the go. Be the first to know the latest on all of your Philly teams right from your smartphone. Download the free CSN Philly sports app right now. Braden Shen, who's 
a point a game pace over his last eight contests. Vanilla Cavalier getting ready as they're out for some power play time here. 47 seconds remaining on the Salter Minor. Here is the Cavalier. A long time between goals for the veteran. Right wing feed here, but offside the call as Reed was kicking that puck out of his skates. Gives us a chance to tell you tonight's Dodge trivia question of the game. Only three Flyers have recorded a hat trick against the Buffalo Sabres. That's surprising given the amount of games these teams have played against one another. But yes, who had is. the most recent one? Was it Simone Gagne, Kevin Deneen, or Tim Kerr? We'll give you the answer later on in the broadcast. All certainly capable of hat tricks. All had hat tricks in their careers. You certainly covered a lot of time there, too. That is for sure. Three of them. The 80s, the 90s, the I was trying to get the puck here. Simmons does with 23 seconds left on the power play. Voracek all the way across looking for Giroux, but it was tipped away. A good play there by the defensive McNabb as he used his reach. Keep that away from Giroux. Now it's teaming in across. Voracek down low. Simmons in front. McNabb's there again. Couldn't clear. Teaming gets it back. Back to Voracek. Voracek moving in, moving in. The shot. It rattles around. Simmons trying to keep it alive. Does. And Ross down. Simmons couldn't get it back out in front. The power play is over. And Seltzer is out of the box, and the Sabres clear the zone. It's the idea against Enroth. He's not very big. If they can get pucks in close and then just out-muscle other people, they'll get scoring chances. Over and rips that one in, and the Sabres will move it up. It bounces off of Couturier. Grossman now able to poke it back to Sean, and Couturier gains the Buffalo line. He's ridden by Gergensen. has got it up toward the slot off the stick, and then Grossman just whacks it back into the corner. Turier and Grigginson's come together there. They puck up the boards. Lead over after it. Grossman in, but it's tipped behind him. It's a two-on-one for the Sabres. As they move up with it, Grigginson has the puck. The shot off the goal post. Inside of the post, and then the Sabres play it back out to the neutral zone. Good break for the Flyers there, but here come the Sabres again. Offside. Offside call, and it slams the puck against the boards in frustration. Rare breakdown at the offensive blue line led to that scoring chance. The Latvian Zemgus Bergensen right off the post. Well, he did the right thing. Coburn stayed right between Bergensen and Molson. So when he did that, then it becomes just one-on-one -on -one between Bergensen and, uh, and Mason. And uh, that was a heck of a shot, by the way, right off the bike. Jurgensons will be heading to Sochi to play for the Latvian Olympic team. His coach will be Ted Nolan. And outside again the call here as that puck got out to the neutral zone before being played back in. Well, the Flyers' wife's carnival is less than two weeks away, and it's your best opportunity to meet your favorite Flyers players and alumni guys. Spend the afternoon at the Wells Fargo Center on Sunday, January the 26th. It starts at 1.30. And you can uh, secure your tickets online at flyerscarnival.com. Fast approaching is right. Two weeks away. Always a great time, obviously for a great cause. Zaros right out in front of his own net. The puck ends up deflecting out to the center race area off of Simmons. But the Sabres have it back now. McVeigh across. And then the puck cleared into the Philadelphia zone by Ott. It's Hartnell back to get it. And he turned it over. Hodgson stole it from him. Trying to play it back to the point, but that'll drift out to the neutral zone. And Nab off of Ott's stick to the Philadelphia line, and now it's Mazaros. Two minutes remaining in this first period. Sabres have only led, we showed you that earlier, they've only led at the end of the first period four times all season there. 50 seconds away from doing it right here. Voracek a shot that just missed wide. Now Grossman shovels it deep off of Voracek to the side of that. Enroth could not cover. Voracek working hard to try to get that puck free, but it bounces out to Omar, and he's going to lob one down the ice. Uh, did so well, not enough to get icing. He's right back to get the puck to Grossman. Grossman on the backhand, moved it out to the center ice area through Raffle. Now it's Sulzer. Back to Philadelphia ice. Mason playing hard on the boards and passed. They get defensively all the way down the ice. They wave off ice, and Raffle will get to the puck first anyhow. Raffle around behind the net. Brings it back out to Strike. Strike, flipping one. Batted on goal by Raffle, and the save made by Enrod. 
Had to be alert there. Did he get that out of midair or was it just... He got in midair and Enroth spotted it and just nailed it with his right toe. Well, as Enroth hasn't won in a long time, mainly, as we said, a victim of a lack of support. He is like a man on a mission here in this one. He only had to face five shots, but three or four of them have been really tough stops. He's able to clear that as it goes back. Hymanet, Erhoff, the steady defenseman, moves it ahead. Pass too far for Omar. He's able to reach and get to it. Now no, he wrestles his arrows down. No call there. Play carries on. Couturier checked, but dropped it back to Le Cavalier, who moves in and flips one. And Enroth handles that one with ease. And then we get some pushing and shoving behind the Buffalo net. Here the referee yelling, there's only going to be one guy go to the box if this continues. So that slows everybody down because if you're going to pick up a penalty at this point, you might as well take somebody with you. And the referee very emphatically yelling, hey, you want to stop now? Only one's going to go. So all of a sudden everything came to a stop. What the ref really means is there's only one guy going besides me. <laughs> yeah. Right? Exactly. <laughs> That's Wes McCauley was doing that shouting. No, that's a that's a great that's a great thing to yell to the players. Like I'm not gonna take, you know, we're not gonna give out coincidentals here. I'm gonna grab one of you. So basically you're challenging the player to call his bluff, right? Who wants to be that guy? Nobody. I'm not gonna call a referee's bluff. They never change their minds. They are the boss. The ice surface. Six seconds remaining in the period. Simmons to Mazaros. The wind up and blast is off the stick of Pezik to the corner, and that's it for period number one. Jonas Enroth, a couple of sparkling saves. The other end of the ice, Cody Hotch is able to beat Steve Mason. It's 1 0 Buffalo with 20 minutes now in the books. Tonight's Flyer Sabres first period was brought to you by Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. By Powerback Rehabilitation. And by Supercuts. Check out Supercuts.com to find a convenient salon location near you. Rock the cuts at Supercuts. Between periods one and two, you will hear from John Bork and Rick Tocchin. Highlights and statistics and analysis. That's next. After one, Buffalo won. The Flyers, no school. Tonight's second period from Buffalo is brought to you by... Your local Delaware Valley Audi dealers and legendary Audi Quattro all-wheel drive. The world's top-selling luxury all-wheel drive system. Also brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And by 5-Hour Energy Helps, which recognizes those who, despite their own needs, put others first. One period down as the Flyers trail the Sabres one to nothing. We look at the Sugar House Casino statistics. Well, you talk about a tight period. The shots were six to five. The Flyers only launched a total of 12 shots. Four were blocked, two went wide. Buffalo only launched 10 total shots. One of those came off the stick of Cody Hodgson and wound up in the net. His ninth of the year, Ott and D'Agostini with the assists. So it is 1-0 Buffalo as we get set to start the second period. GFC NHL update. Boston and Toronto, Atlantic Division matchup. The Treat Bergeron stuffing that one. Past Toronto goaltender Bernier to make it 2-1 Boston, but back come the Leafs. James Van Reems like the great feed to Tyler Bozak, his second of the night. And that one is now 3-2 Toronto. Montreal Boston play. Max Pacioretty continues to be red hot as he beats Marty Brodeur with that one. Back come the Devils. And who else but Yarmir Yager to cut to the slot and score. Goal number 695 in his career. Now seventh all time ahead of Marc Messier. That game tied at one after one period of play. And there are the numbers. And looking good doing it too. This Indeed. is not a guy that is hanging on. 
Yeah, he's the leading scorer for those Devils and closing in on 700 for his career. Someday it will end. We just don't know when. It will end later than many thought it would. Uh, a lot of people thought that uh, he had shown signs last year perhaps being out of gas, but he has proven all of those people wrong. All right, we get set for the start of the second here, Coatsy. And Roth was good in that first, although not necessarily busy, but at times had to come up with some big stops. This is the one that is our Hyundai save of the game. Is Giroux's going to come cutting across. Now watch, ready right the last second, the backhand, but it goes off of the shin pad of Bellileno. And then still, Enroth, who's not the biggest guy in the world, he just threw his body back into the crease area to make our Hyundai save of the game. But Claude Giroux was only following the scouting report. You noticed how far out of the crease Enroth was because he is small. He wants to come out and cut down angles. And if you think you can get him tangled in traffic, take the shot and go wide. Enroth with a remarkable recovery. Wraparound try by Hartnell as we start the second period. Nearly found its way in. Another shot from the angle, and Enroth has that somewhere in his equipment. So the Flyers, just 15 seconds in, a couple of chances on Enroth as they go right to work. Good wraparound attempt by Scott Hartnell. Oh, it was Ooh. the second attempt. That was the most dangerous one. Yeah, his body. Oh, yeah, he's got his pad up against the pipe, but his body wasn't up against the pipe. There's a little room. Maybe a little bit more to the right. That might have bounced off Enroth and into the net. Flyers get to the puck. Here's Hartnell behind the cage. This has been the Flyers' best line of the last two to three weeks. Simmons, Hartnell, Braden Shen. Much of it's because of work like that along the wall. Flyers are going to power play. Roseman gets it back to strike for a shot. That hit his stick and bounced off the glass. And then Weber played the puck to get the whistle. But the good work of that line draws a penalty, and the Flyers will get a mad advantage. Absolutely right. I mean, the Sabres are a pretty disciplined team. They don't take a lot of penalties, but when you force them and grind them and get body position on them. 24 Buffalo minor penalty holding. You got to grab on. Mike Zed and Kanopka, who came over to, on waivers from the Minnesota Wild the 1st of January. And very aggressive player. Seven fights this year, but he'll pick up a holding call and an opportunity for the Flyers to tie this hockey game. He does know the way to the penalty box. Yes, he did. Great. Shen did a great job of keeping his legs going there to make yes, that happen. And so Kanopka sits the Flyers. An advantage trying to tie this game up. McDonald's power play payoff contested. Flyers have the puck. Giroux surveying it now, sliding inside of the net. Simmons, the shot save. And the second try was denied as well. And now the Sabres bounce it all the way down the ice. Wayne Simmons pivoted with the puck and looked for somebody. There was nobody there. Made a pretty good decision trying to go high over the shoulder on Enrod. Team in now moving through center. The right wing dish to Voracek. Voracek the shot. Save and Rothy. Buck into the slot, but it bounced off of Simmons. Now a shot. Giroux goes wide. It's chopped to the boards by Erhoff. Giroux will spin it down low. It actually was cut off by the save. There's a chance to clear now for Felino, but he's bumped by Hartnell. And that allows Giroux to get to the puck. Across to Team in. Set it up again. <coughs> Gives to the captain. Giroux right back to Kimo at the point. Play catch. 05 in the power play. In the slot. Hartnell's shot. In front. Simmons gets it back across for Voracek. He scores! Jake Voracek feeding Enroth. Nice feed from Simmons. This game is tied at one on the power play goal. Voracek scores for a case of Tasty Cake. Couldn't you just tell that this power play was going to get something? First couple of power plays, the Flyers just built on this one. They were loaded up. When Wayne Simmons turned, the first thing he saw was Jake Voracek. Nice pass. And the Sabres get caught a little bit. Everybody was on the other side of the pipe. So that leaves Voracek right there by himself. You go east-west, and Roth not that big. He can't get there in time. And Jake just let that one go. What a great pass from Simmons over to Jake Voracek. East-west, boys. Voracek, moving. fifth power play goal of the year. His 13th goal overall. Only his second career goal against the Sabres in 13 games. A big one here as he ties this game. Early in the second period. Flyers road power play continues to be a major weapon. Now here's a steal. Le Cavalier busting into the zone. Swings to the left wing. Tried to center for Reed, but it was blocked off. 
by the defenseman with Bain getting back. Has a play in center. This one sends it through the neutral zone, then it's pitched right back for the Philadelphia zone. That's icing against Buffalo. Great puck control and puck possession on that power play. Everybody had a piece of it, and every guy on the ice touched the puck before the puck went in. Well, let's take a look at our power back rehabilitation comeback goal of the game. The Sabres led 1 0 on a goal by Cody Hodgson, and then all of a sudden, the Philadelphia Flyers come back and tie the score by Jake Borchek. Luke Shen to the puck, into the red line. Molson cut it off there. He spun around by Raffle. Raffle is. So often does able to push that puck forward. The Sabres cut it off. Now McNabb has to deal with Giroux. Was able to clear. Zaros hustles back to get to it. Banks it at hoping for Raffle. Also got in the way and he tucks it back into the Philadelphia zone. Raffle over after it. Jabs it out to the neutral zone. Ran right back in by the Sabres. And the first to it is Flint. Shuttled around behind the net. Leno is checked. Giroux able to spot Raffle. Raffle looking for four check. It's knocked down by Flynn. Bounces back to Jake. They went across the line. He's going to skate it in. Voracek gets those legs moving all the way around behind. Out the other side. Turns, fires, and it's blocked off by Saltzer. And it goes into the safety netting. As, as I said in our open, every time he touches the puck, you think something good's going to happen. Let's show you once again the power back. Come back goal as Jake Voracek is going to be able to Get this pass from Wayne Simmons, and it's a dandy to bring the Flyers back once again. That's our power back rehabilitation. Come back goal of the game. Jake Voracek tying the score at one. Jake Voracek now 10 goals in his last 18 games. As always, Flyers score for a case of Tasty Cake. Whistle stopping play. We got a penalty here. Interference call spotted out. In the neutral zone off of that face off. It's, it's going to be against Jay Rosehill. And Rosehill just kind of shook his head. It's going to come right off the face off that you mentioned. He just kind of shook his head like, and he's going to talk to Gord Dwyer about it. Like, what, what are you, tell me exactly what I did wrong. Now watch the face off. Right. I'm sorry, go ahead. It's on the right of the screen there. He got his arm out a little bit ahead of Cody Hodson. He's trying to get out on the play. Wow. Uh, that's tight. I mean, uh, yeah. in, a, in a game, if you're going to let guys play, you wouldn't call that. In a game, if you wanted to establish some kind of tourniquet-like tightness, you'd call that. Let's consider the tourniquet applied. Yeah, really. Well, Rose Hill, I thought he had position, but maybe a little bit at the end there, but that's his responsibility to take that guy from getting out to the point. And uh, I think he had a, a, a good reason to ask the referee why that was called. The Sabres to the man advantage, their second of the game. Coburn will shovel this one toward Enron. Would love that one. Erhoff. for Erhoff. Erhoff. That's the most minutes for this Buffalo team. Gets it to Ennis for a shot that's deflected by team in wide. Reed, a chance to clear, couldn't. Kept in by McBain. Across to Erhoff. He'll wind and fire through heavy traffic. It went wide. Hodgson to the puck. Cody Hodgson turns toward the net. He blasts one. Save Mason. Rebound cleared by Coburn out of harm's way, but not out of the zone. Erhoff keeps it in, but he turns it over to Reed. And this time, no mistake for Matt Reed. He fires it all the way down. And a couple of dangerous chances by Buffalo. It's pretty amazing when you're on the PK. If you miss that first attempt to clear, you almost always give up a good scoring chance. In that case, a couple. But, uh, one shot went wide. Mason to save on another. McNabb will wind it into the Philadelphia zone. Ueno after it. Goes past him all the way out to Omar. And it's Omar across for McNabb. And now it's Omar again. What about a shot now? Spins with it. Back ends to Ott. Ott sends it up the back. And then he's decked by Luke Shen. Leno to the puck. Leno's pass tipped and stolen by Hall. Who backhands it ahead. And then it's cleared the rest of the way by Andeveld. Flyers. Now just 20 seconds to kill. McNabb moves it into the middle. Augustini got the line but lost the puck, and Luke Shen will turn it all the way back down the ice. Flyers do a great job on the penalty kill. When they come back into the neutral zone, they all turn backwards. So that way they're all looking at the puck there as compared to chase, chasing them down. All four right now in the neutral zone, skating back. Ozil's out of the box. Fires have killed off the Buffalo power play. Remains a 1-1 game. We passed the five-minute mark of this second period. Over jabbing the puck free to Scott Hartnell. 
And he'll flutter one out to the neutral zone off the stick of Weber. They say not a high stick. Now it's on. The wing feed for Seltzer. He'll wind it deep into the Philadelphia zone off the stick of Mason. Coburn will reverse. Zaros. Zaros ahead through Rosehill and out to the neutral zone. Fires it out shot to Sabres 5 to 1 here in the second period. Now 11 to 6 for the game. It's tied where it counts at 1. And Ellis brings that puck deeper into the Philadelphia zone. It's Felino. It's it back to the point. Seltzer a shot that's blocked and that stung the flyer as the puck bounces back to center ice. Hartnell making his way very slowly to the Philadelphia bench. As that one appeared to get him in a bad area. We'll be right back. There's Flyers defenseman Mark Stride. About 15 games ago, his game really came alive, playing some good hockey. We asked him before the game, what gave your game life? Well, it took me uh, a little while, uh, you know, to feel comfortable. And, uh, you know, I played in New York for five years, and uh, it was a big change. It's a different organization, and now I feel really comfortable. And, uh, you know, uh, usually uh, in a season, I I, uh, I get better throughout the year. I don't know why that is, but uh, I've been playing pretty well, and I use my legs, and uh, I join the rush, and, you know, I, I, I take the shots. Uh, I thought in the beginning of the year I was looking for passes and perfect plays, and, and now I just uh, try to get a puck on that. And he's getting a lot of those shots through. Took him a long time to get his first goal as a flyer. There's a backhander from the slot, snared by Enroth. It took Mark Stride a while to get that first goal as a flyer, but now he has six as he leads the way for the flyer blue line core, which has been much more active offensively over the last month or so. Mark Stride can sure bring it. And I, I, I thought he was thinking to pass first as well. And it just turns out it was a comfort level. Just adjusting to the surroundings and feeling more comfortable. But boy, his big weapon is his shot. There he is. No shooting lane this time. Gets the puck to four. A check. His shot blocked. Ruffles headed across. Ice it bounced off Giroux wide. Now Giroux has it. Giroux back for four. A check. He'll track it down behind the net. Step in front. Lose control. It sits there. Giroux will whack at it. Now he's got it behind the net. Tried to center. It goes to Raffle. Raffle back out. Destroyed. Tremendous pressure from the Flyers here as they try to take the lead. Raffle turns with it. Fires direct. Redirected wide of the net. Giroux after the puck. Knocked down a saber. Raffle bench wanted to call. They're not going to get it. Puck. Along the wall and the Sabres come up with it. It's Ennis. Lead to the Philadelphia zone. Gergensen is after it. Grossman tied him up, but he'll get a penalty for it. Gergensen still able to poke that puck in on goal. Mason made the save, and it's Grossman who tied up Gergensen enough to get the whistle, and so another Buffalo power play. There will be no argument on this call. The puck ended up lagging to the perfect wrong spot for either Steve Mason to come out and get it, or Nick Grossman knock it out of the way, and that was a must-take penalty. There are good ones and bad ones. That was a had to, must take. Yeah, Grossman just lost the step on Gergensen there. And that would have been a bad situation there because Gergensen's got some speed as he was cooking, going to the well, top of the circle to the dot. Call it interference. Buffalo's third power play. Flyers the most penalized team in the NHL. Craig Ruby continues to harp on it. Says his team is facing too many power plays. As you guys said, some of them you have to take, and that was one of them. There's Tiemannen moving on up. Tiemannen will flip it in. It's batted with the corner by Enron. Couturier back around behind, but that one got cut up in the safety netting. And the play stopped. Face it off back in the neutral zone. Off here just outside the Buffalo Blue Line. Just getting word that Scott Hartnell has returned to the bench. Thought I saw him in that last shot. And that's a good sign as he had ripped off. And really, as he was going down the tunnel, didn't look like he was putting much weight on one of his legs at all. We, we've seen that movie before, yeah. and the ending wasn't pretty last yeah. year. Significant time missed with a broken bone and never really did get into a rhythm last season. He's been in a rhythm lately, his line mates. Crowd growing anxious here as this power play reaches its midpoint. The Sabres having trouble getting organized. Now Ennis in across the line. It's a bit of a pick as he swings to the right wing. All the way around behind the Philadelphia net. 
the other side, and then he gets it to McBain. To Ennis, and now down low. They centered in front. Olsen could not hang on. It's kept in by McBain. A shot in front, and the save made by Mason. The puck all the way out to center, and the Flyers have it. Hall moving up. Vandeveldi's with him, but the Sabres getting back, so Hall just carries the puck in. Sabres take the puck, and with a half minute remaining in the man advantage, move to the neutral zone. Here's Molson from over in the Thomas Vanek tray. Chips to Ennis, gets it back by the center. Flyers are on that. But Reed almost lost it. He's able to find that puck and get it ahead, and it's sent the rest of the way by Coburn. So time for one more rush with this man advantage for the Sabres. They've got some speed. D'Agostini to the Philadelphia line. Lost the puck, though. Shen there, winding it up. Nab kept it in momentarily, but then Couturier butted it out to the neutral zone. Out of the box, jumps Grossman, the Flyers. Three for three on the kill here. A steal by Couturier. Couturier cutting to the middle. Couturier tried to pass. It's blocked, and a backhander blocked. Now Lecavier digging for the rebound, but it was blocked off in front. We'll drop it back. McNabb sends it up the wall. Swept ahead by Strike. Hit the linesman in the skate, and the Flyers pump it into the Buffalo zone. Well, they didn't give the Flyers didn't give the Sabres a scoring chance on their power play. Strike has to hustle back here and does to keep it away from one Sabre. They're onside, though, as they'll play it down low. Kanapke got it behind the Philadelphia net. Grossman there takes a hit, but got it ahead. Flyers move it to center. Simmons move it across ice to Strike. Now Brayton Shen. The right wing with it. Shen, the shot, it's blocked. Bounces out in Enroth. Very aggressive, jabbing that to the court. Now Braden Shen to the point. Simmons will take a shot, and I think that hit McCoburn. Uh, yeah, it goes out of play. Coburn just uh, not in the right spot there as he was cutting through. Well, let's take a look at our independent Blue Cross fearless play of the game as Alexander Sulzer, he's going to wind up. Now watch Scott Hartnell. He's just going to get in the way, and oh my goodness, you can see that he is hurting as he headed to the locker room very, very delicately. And ladies and gentlemen, if I can tell you that that is fearless. Blocking shots is not something that is easy, and every one of them hurt. I don't care how much equipment you got on. Fires the attack again here, Coatsy, as they get the four check game going. Raffle to four check in front. Drew knocked a man down as he went after that puck. The puck went on through. Coburn has to use his speed to beat Felino to it. And move it back to Raffle. His pass fight for a check, but then he lost control. And then the Sabres have it back. Here's Erhoff. Erhoff moves it as far as Coburn in center. But bouncing around. There's finally get control. He passed the midpoint of regulation time. 1 1 hockey game. Fires much sharper here in this second period. Much better puck control. And that's one of the, the hallmarks of a Craig Berube system and a Craig Berube team. He believes in maintaining control, moving pucks up the ice, generating attack that way. I mean, I, I agree with him very often. When you just dump the puck out or in, if you don't do it by design, you just give it back to the other team. That puck deflects out of play. 8.57 to play in the second in this 1-1 one -one game. Welcome back to Buffalo. You're looking out. So yes, it does snow here in Buffalo, but what you're seeing there, construction workers, are going to work on what's called Harbor Center, just outside First Niagara Center. A beautiful complex, going to include a hotel, entertainment, similar to Xfinity Live. Part of that also is what's called Canal Side, which is uh, run by Global Spectrum, and that's all part of uh, the Harbor Center. And it's beautiful. It's already, you can tell this is going to be a hopping place here. Great. But for so long, this arena almost seemed like it was down at the very end of town and there wasn't a whole lot going on. Well, that's going to change soon. It'll be fantastic. And by the way, that video was not shot today. Buffalo is actually snow free. Yeah. And that's a plug for Buffalo this time of year. It is. Well, we walked all the way from the arena to the hotel, so I told you it wasn't that bad here today. No. We even got you to do it, Coach. It wasn't the brightest thing I've ever done, but... <laughs> the entire way, he tried to get us to hop on the train with him. There's a train there, Jimmy. The reason they're there. <laughs> Here's Simmons trying to center its block. And they get it back to Grossman, whose shot goes wide. Well, Coatsy, you know, rest assured, there's a hotel going in as part of that whole complex, so maybe your walk will be much shorter the next time we come to Buffalo. There's a broken stick as McNabb's stick breaks. Flyer centered in front. Reed! 
did not finish. I'm not sure if it hit the post or was denied by a saber, but it stayed out. There will be, I think, a penalty coming up. But this game is somehow still tied at one. Reed with a chance to give the Flyers the lead. It just did not go. 44 Buffalo minor penalty roughing. Roughing penalty to Buffalo. McNabb. But check out the nerves of steel here of Matt Reed just waiting, waiting. And he tried to dish it back across to Simmons, and I think that was the penalty right at the end. Watch Wayne Simmons on the far side of the net get nailed from behind. Bang. Well, McNabb didn't have a stick. He had lost his stick. So right at the end of the play, watch. You see Simmons right there ready. The two Buffalo Sabres were in the goal crease to be able to save that one. Lano was right there. Billy Lano. Yeah. And right there at the end, you saw McNabb without the stick drilled Simmons up against the net. So McNabb gets the penalty. The Flyers with their fourth power play. They scored their goal in this game with one of their first three mad advantages. There's your McDonald's power play payoff contestant. The Flyers trying to take their first lead of the game. Giroux, left wing feed. Hartnell in front! Giroux redirected, but it went wide to the corner. And then it's cleared all the way down by Weber. As we continue with the same unit, whoop, team and they'll beat into the puck here. Miscommunication between Mason and Kimo. Jurgensen was in there, but the Flyers able to emerge with the puck. Team it in will get to Giroux. He's wide to the right wing, flings the puck around. Hartnell. To jam that back, it bounces to Giroux. Tried to get it to the point, but Gergensen will intercept and move it across to Brian Flynn. Flynn, the wrist shot denied by Mason. Rare shot on goal for the Sabres here in this second period. Now Reed gets the puck deep. Fires are in the middle of making player changes. Can they keep the puck in? Strike does to Reed onto the corner of the Cavalier. Back out. Now Couturier, cross for strike. They're set up to Couturier. Takes the shot, gives it to Simmons down low. Jamming away at it, but could not get it past Enron. Simmons still out on the power play as he did not get off the ice. And nearly scored a goal. There's trouble. Now the Flyers steal that puck. It goes off a reach, skate to the side of the net. And Enron is able to cover up. So with 23 seconds remaining on the power play, the Flyers get ready for an offensive zone draw. Later tonight on the orange line, Jake Borchek will speak on his recent hot streak and how even he doesn't know where it's going when he shoots in on net. Al Gill works for the March of Dimes Foundation. Close to look at Braden Shen's unforgettable game against the Devils. All that and more on the orange line presented by Bradford Whitewater Heaters coming up tonight, 11.30, right here on Comcast Sports. Great show for Flyer fans to inside access on their club players. Looks it all the way down by the Sabres Seltzer. One last rush for the Flyers with this man advantage. The strikes pass is tipped by Ott out of play. A bit of face off in the neutral zone. The Flyers now just having to be patient, grind it out. The Buffalo Sabres are going to try not to give the Flyers anything. Power plays will be bonuses. Five on five, there ain't much going on. This is settling into a typical Sabres home game. No doubt. There's not a lot of goals either way. The Sabres are 6-0-2 oh, as we mentioned in the last eight, but it's not like they've been scoring a lot of goals either in that stretch. It's just been shutting the other team down. They've won a lot of games after regulation. In fact, the Sabres with just five wins this season in regulation. They have played 44. This is their 45th game. Icing the call. The power play is over. Well, I'll say, don't forget, you can now catch your next Flyers game from a premium lower level seat, and you get access to all kinds of neat things like a private bar, weight service, restrooms that are right there. Just call 215 389 9500 now and ask for the latest special offers for January and February. Here's a shot from the point that drifts wide of Enron. And now a penalty coming up. And it's on Philadelphia. The Flyers had the puck when the whistle stopped play. Hooking the signal. 5.59 to go in the set. Well, there's a little confusion here on who the penalty is on. Now, you see Adam Hall talking to Gordon Dwyer. 
and the call originally was on Raffle for hooking. But what happened was when you take a look, everybody, is it you? Who did it? Who, I, I don't know. I didn't touch anybody. But Raffle was about ready to come out of the the zone, and you'll see why. Right there, Adam Hall gets the stick right there on Salter. Then Raffle falls down. Another saber falls down. That's where everybody thought the hooking coming was when Raffle kind of jumped around, but it was Adam Hall there coming back into the zone and getting his stick on the hands of Alexander Salsa. Both are penalty killers. Hall, very important on the penalty kill for his ability on face-offs. So Flyers probably, if they were pushed, would rather have Raffle in the box, but it's Hall who sits. And the Sabres to the man advantage for the fourth time. Hodgson's pass across blocked and then sent the length of the ice by Matt Reed. Sabres and Flyers now. Each had four power plays in this game. Erhoff sends it into the Philadelphia zone. Couturier takes a look around, controls the puck, tried to clear, but it went off the glass and then the safety net. No penalty. The faceoff will be in the Philadelphia zone. So the Flyers trying to kill this power playoff that the Sabres have. The Sabres are 30th ranked in offense in the NHL. And when I'm talking about a wide margin, it is a wide margin. Talk about their last eight games, they scored a total of 11 goals. And in that time, they picked up four wins and points in two of the losses. Good goaltending and sound defensive hockey has obviously been the key. They scored two or less in 34 of their 44 games this year. There's there off a shot, and that one denied as Holson was right in there looking for that deflection. And Develde working on Ennis, but Ennis has got the puck to Molson. He could not do anything with it. The Flyers jump on it. Remo Timonen moving up. Three seven. Some speed. A backhand going on that one. Now the Sabres have it. They have a man behind the defense, but the pass from Olsen off the mark. Mason comes out, plays the puck, spins it the other way. It's tipped up the boards. They don't get it out of the zone, but that was pretty impressive for Mason right there nonetheless. And now, well, Raffle unable to clear. So here's Molson. Right behind that, they center it, goes back on through. They're off the wall by McBain. And he gets it to go to auction. Homer Canuck, back to McBain and then across. One time shot! Mason able to tip that. It looked like it might have changed direction as again Molson was in there trying to get his stick on. Now Hodgson to the slot, his pass crosses. Read beautifully by Timonen. He steals and clears. The little Finn was just sitting in the weeds, wasn't he? He was. <laughs> Waiting to jump out and go boom! He makes those plays look easy, but he's Kimo Timonen's ability to anticipate the play and read it is remarkable. It's allowed him to play. He's 38 years of age at a high level. There's Omar's pass, bounces off of Grossman, fires back to full strength right now. So they've killed off four Buffalo power plays in this game. And the Flyers have now killed off 30 of their last 31 man down situations as we come your way. First Niagara Center, that's us, along with our great crew. Really, Mike Mulligan, our director, who celebrated a birthday yesterday here in Buffalo. Boy, I hope Happy you had a good time. Happy birthday, Mike. He has the birthday. name that every golfer wants to have, right? It was a pleasure to celebrate his birthday with him. Yeah, we were with him. Once <laughs> he finds people who are having birthdays so he can celebrate with them. Here's Weber, a shot deflected right on through the slot, and now Couturier will clear it off the glass to the neutral zone. That's a move to the head, and then it's played up and out of play by Kanapka. 3.35 remaining on the second period clock. Take a look at Sean Couturier. Boy, he comes every night to work, 150%. This guy, such a quiet man, but he's got Matt Reed back there on the left-hand side. That should be a help for him. Lecavier well, struggled a little bit. He's got to be able to get those legs moving and get more involved. Yeah, Flyers, a couple players. Steve Downey, a coach's decision scratch for the second consecutive game. They're trying to figure out a way to get him back his game. And the Cavalier hasn't scored since before he came back from that injury. So while they haven't put him together some wins, there's still some players that aren't rolling right now. Mason will cover the puck up here, take a face off in his own zone. 
Let's take a look at our Wells Fargo grade check of the game. And Nick Grossman hits, blocks, does everything back there in the blue line. He's a big man. But watch here as Felino. well, he gets the pass. And this is what you say, just nullifying the man. He didn't really get a ton of them, but he nullified them. In other words, Felino was going nowhere after Grossman just rode him off against the wall. The big bear, quiet and efficient and effective. Yes. Back end by Molson's blocked off. Flyers now move ahead. Here is the Cavalier from the red line. Twists it into the Buffalo zone. As if he's back. Gets it away from Horacek. Moves it up the wall. Off the stick of Gergensen's and all the way down. Coburn will race back to get the icing call. Well, I would want to remind you the tickets for the 2014 Frozen Four at the Wells Fargo Center on April 10th and 12th. They're on sale now, and they continue to sell very quickly. Tickets include access to two semifinal games and the national championship game, and you can grab them online at ComcastTix.com. Who's number one in the country right now? Is it still Minnesota? Minnesota, I believe, in the yeah. latest poll. Yeah. Always a great program there. Chance to be there, but you never know in the NCAA hockey tournament. One and done, and there's usually at least one team that arrives at the Frozen Four that you had no idea would be there. Never expect to be there. Is a shot that deflects off a of body to the corner. Get it back to Coburn, and now it's Giroux centering. So check has to crack that down on the wall, and his pass across. Good to handle that. Cavalier. Getting a shift with Giroux and Voracek with Raffle. And he some time on the penalty kill. Now Voracek. Is that a cross? Oh, it's a turnover. Jurgensen has the puck, lays it off for Molson. The shot! Mason the save. Had to reach a second time to cover up, but he got it done. Mason has not been busy at all here in the period, but there's a big stop late in the stanza. No kidding. And you do not want to give Matt Molson the chance from that area because he is a bona fide sniper. Yeah, Jake Voracek tried the cross ice pass and didn't have much of a chance. Here's Molson right there. Oh, what did it hit? Hit the back of Jake Voracek? Yeah, it did. Well, that's a great recovery by Voracek to be able to jump back into that after making the miscue by trying to go cross ice in the neutral zone. That's the wrong guy to have that puck in front of Mason. Molson was just sitting here saying, look, I hit Voracek. Myers turned it over again, and Hodgson's shot denied. He didn't get a lot on that, but Mason had to make the stick save. And some late pressure here from the Sabres in the second period. But now Simmons will knock the puck down. And he fanned on that pass as he was trying to spring Hartnell. Now it's straight back for Philadelphia. Ahead for Simmons. Dropping it off for Braden Shen. Braden Shen weaving his way to the line. Simmons had lost an edge and gone down into the zone. So Shen had to wait. He just plays it in now. The Flyers will... At least some of them go for a change. Now Simmons will as well. McNabb's long pass was not tipped, even though D'Agostini's trying to convince the linesman he did tip it, and so it's icing. Offensive zone draw with 133 remaining here in the second period. The Sabres under new management with new GM. The new everything. Week. Yeah, Tim Murray now at the helm. Terry Murray's nephew, who's now coaching the Flyers farm team in Adirondack, and Brian Murray's nephew. Ted Nolan is still called interim, but that may be changing. They're saying that's going to change soon. He's done a good job here. Al Afontaine, of course, has taken over. Craig Patrick's now part of the brain trust here. Zaz is shot. Got off by Enron. Big hit. Knocks three down in the corner. Now he's back up, and he's got the puck. At Reed. He's back down low. Raffle, he's ridden to the board by McNabb. Now Reed is steal. He's looking back. Now he'll play it down low. Couturier back to Reed for the shot. Save and Roth. The rebound. Couturier able to steal. He'll play it back toward the point. A bouncing puck from Mazaros. He's got it now. He's in along the wall. Stipped away from Couturier. Now Hodgson trying to clear Luke Shen pinches and keeps it in. Couturier is it along the board for Raffle. His pass to Reed. Barreled into again by Ott. Raffle goes and gets the puck to Luke Shen. Quick shot, blocked in front. Reed looking for the rebound. Bounces away, back out to Matt now. Reed will drop it off for Mazaros. Mazaros will skate the puck in along the boards. Andre Mazaros creating a lot of offensive late. Still after that puck. Now Couturier, who is checked. 
Goes into the midsection a little bit from Ott. Couturier goes right back at Ott. And they both wind up on the ice. Raffle trying to battle and get that puck out in front. Reed was knocked down, and now the Sabres move out. Big Bain with Agostini. And he'll wide up Mazaros. Mazaros sweeps the puck away from him. 13 seconds remain in the period. Ahead it goes. Couturier just flipping it through the neutral zone. The Cavalier gets tangled up. And a man goes down. No penalty called. Crowd's not going to like that. Leno now loses the puck nearly to four. Check it back. Four check does get to it, but he runs out of time as the horn sounds. Ending period number two. Big four check with all that speed, but even he couldn't beat Father Time there as the clock had run its course. So this one tied at one. 40 minutes of play. Tonight's Flyers Sabres second period was brought to you by Kia. To learn more, visit Kia.com. Also brought to you by the Pennsylvania Lottery. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot now has an estimated annuity of $30 million. So play today. Pennsylvania Lottery proceeds benefit older Pennsylvania. Players must be 18 years or older. Downstairs we go to Steve Coates as he chats with the Flyers' only goal scorer thus far in this one. Thanks very much, Jimmy. And Billy, you had mentioned about how this power play was working so well. Are you guys really doing the, the number one thing, trying to get that puck down low in around Enroth? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I think last game we had a lot of shots at the net as well. And, uh, you know, we just got to make sure we funnel the puck to the net because that's how you score the goals. And, uh, you know, it was a great pass by Simmer. I had a basically empty netter. Well, when you talk about going east-west like that, you guys seem to really have that down. You, your positioning there is the key, right? Is Getting right there facing as a left-hand shot? Yeah, of course, you know, we played together for three years, basically. So, same unit, everybody know what they gotta do. You know, everybody knows what the other guy gonna do. So, uh, it's very important to move well without the puck and, uh, you know, everything else is, uh, is easy. Thanks very much, Jake. Thank you. Yeah, Jimmy, he is, to you. he is making the game look easy, isn't he? Jake Voracek, John Boric, Rick Tockett will analyze the second period as our coverage of Flyers Hockey continues on Comcast Sportsnet after these messages. Tonight's third period on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by your Philadelphia Super Network Buick GMC dealers. And by McDonald's. Now at McDonald's, any size iced coffee, coffee, or sweet tea is just one dollar. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Sugar House Casino statistics through two periods of play. Flyers uh, taking a control in terms of shots during that second period. It's still a tight game, but the Flyers were superior in the second period, and the best forward checking shift of the entire game so far was the last minute and a half of that second period, led by Sean Couturier and his line mates. There's the scoring summary, limited as it were for that second period jake Forcheck, the only goal is 13th year was a power play tally with simmons and hartnell tying this game at one our gmc nhl update thanks you to nashville the predators and flames predators next opponent for the flyers left we'll keep an eye on that guy shea weber with the power play blast gave the preds the lead but lee stepniak retaliates for the flames right there to tie it at one as they play down in music city Preds will be in Philadelphia on Thursday night. And as you can see, they need wins. The Preds were in the mix not too long ago, but they have slumped lately and dropped all the way down to sixth place. Yeah, there's a log jam in six, seven, and eight. The other team is Minnesota, Colorado, St. Louis, and especially Chicago. We had that picture up of Jake Voracek. We were showing you our scoring summary, and I almost forgot what he looked like without the beard. <laughs> And long hair. He's letting his hair grow out as he does during the course of the season. When he arrives at training camp, he's freshly quaffed, and then, then he starts looking like a hockey player as the year goes along. But uh, you leave him alone at this point because whatever he's doing, it's working. He's scoring a lot of goals and playing some great hockey. Underway here in the third. Beard's going to get awful hot in June, though. It could. Here's a turnover, and the puck dribbles back to Mason as D'Agostini could not do anything with that, and it would be a face-off in the Philadelphia zone. 
So patience and good D, that's the focus of the Flyers because you know the Sabres will be playing that way. And earlier in this game, the Flyers gave up really a, a gimme to Cody Hodgson because he was wide open in the slot. Then they gave up a two-on-one. Since then, the Flyers have really clamped it down. I really only remember that sequence late in that second period where they got some scoring chances, not much else. Mason was not very busy in that second period at all. Flyers wouldn't mind that happening again here in the third. The big thing is no self-inflicted wounds. If you don't turn the puck over, the Sabres have trouble generating. Remote teaming into the puck. Last uh, 15 games here in this building. The total goal count has not gone over six in any of them. So uh, it's tough to get goals here either way. Sabres aren't scoring up, but they aren't giving much up. Drew fires that one wide. Now it's Coburn. Backing it back down low. A race over for it. Teaming in aggressive along the boards, but it rolls on out to the rugged defenseman, Weber, and he'll get it ahead off Molson into the Philadelphia zone. Mason steers to Teaman. And Timo will clear the zone, but is cut off shortly thereafter by Ennis. Got back by the veteran defenseman. Popped it through to the Buffalo line. As it got it ahead to Ennis, and now in it goes, but the play is offside at the Philadelphia line. Well, we've talked a lot about the difficulties the Sabres have had in scoring. Coming into tonight's game, Claude Giroux of the Flyers tied for 20th in the league in scoring. The Sabres' top point producer, close to Tyler Ennis, but not him. Actually, Matt Molson tied for 106th in scoring in the lead. The second leading scorer for the Sabres, Cody Hodson, even though he's been hurt a lot, tied for 190th. Wow. Think about it. Their leading assist producer is Christian Erhoff with 14 this season. Matt Reed back to get the puck here. Drops it off from Mazaros. Pass off of Reed and then back to Luke Shen. He'll bounce one deep into the Buffalo zone. As he goes back for it. To Erhoff and ahead they go. Pass all the way across. And then shoveled deep to Philadelphia ice by Gergensen. Luke Shen has to race over to get to that. There's the Cavalier. This pass is to Reed, moving up the right wing. Reed looks to the middle. Sends it around behind the net off the stick. Couturier to the puck there. Couturier looks. I didn't have an appointment, a very slow change. And now Mason's heading to the bench. Extra attacker is there's a delayed call against Buffalo. Fires had four skaters on the ice for a little while now. But they still only have five. Now yeah. Yeah, there's they're still needed. No, they got them now. Now they've got <laughs> six out there. As they get a little bonus power play time, if you will, the goalie pulled. And the delayed call. Right around that empty net. Mark Strike starts up. It's to Giroux. And now Shen. Cuts it across the line. Drops it back. Guides it to Strike across for Giroux. And Giroux will backhand on the boards. That's gotten to by the Sabres. And so the whistle. A hooking call. And the Flyers will get their fifth. 65 Buffalo event. minor penalty hooking. Wes McCauley letting everybody know who's in charge. Yes. So this is the opportunity that the Flyers are looking for here early in the third. Lone goal scored on a power play. Brian Flynn, the guilty party. Right off the draw. Team it in a shot. Changed direction. Is kicked out of there and cleared by Buffalo. There's one for Four with a man advantage. Major McDonald's power play payoff contested. They gain the line. Hartnell popping it back to Timonen. And they're set up. Giroux all the way across. It's tipped. Wojciech eventually gets the puck. They give themselves some space. Now finds Simmons who spun it on the wall with a lot of force. Giroux, great job to get to that. Timonen before a check. Four check across for Giroux. Bouncing puck. Long passes seem difficult on this ice surface here tonight. Here's Giroux. Side of the net. Simmons tried to spin it in front but lost control and Gergensen's clears. Three solid kill by the Sabres. They have the guys like Tiemann and Giroux. Borchek trying to spot somebody in their great passers, but the lanes weren't there. So the Flyers have changed up here. Strike from the red line. Rips it in. Goes now try to pursue it. They get it now. Right, trying to reach for it along the wall, and it's finally jabbed past him and down the ice. Good work by Matt Ellis. 
Under 42 seconds on the power play. Big chance here for the Flyers. Haven't done a whole lot with it yet. Straight to Reed. He gets it back. Pulls it down low. Couturier after the puck. Bounces back to Braden Shen. Shen gets it to Straight. Now the pass and the shot. Yeah, that one denied. That was Shen over there with that shot. No, it was the Cavalier. Now Strike tries to center, and Couturier will get to it. Couturier tried to get it to Le Cavalier, and then he could not knock it down and step back to the neutral zone. Now the long pass across. Vinny has it again. Le Cavalier sort of flooded that one over the slot. Weber broke it up. Coburn gets it back. Flyers power play has come to an end. Out of the box jumps Flynn, and he is out of the field here as the Sabres get to the puck. Now it's a three on two as they move up. Gergensen's with it. The shot goes wide. Bounces side of the net. Mason jabs it to the corner. And the Flyers get it back. Here's Reed. He's trying to bank that one. It takes a strange hop. Sabres get it back in the pass head to Tyler Ennis. Rink wide feed. And Weber will wind it deep to Philadelphia. Oostman with a hit. Omark after the puck. And the ability after him. Now Ennis spun it in front off the stick of Mason. Olsen got knocked down. And the Flyers move the puck through the neutral zone. Down to Buffalo Ice. Weber back to get it. Harassed by Rafa, who steals the puck. Vanderbilt follows up. His angle shot is blocked. Bounces high in the air. All the way back out to Timonen. Timonen stripped of the puck. But uh, Rafa recovers it for Philadelphia to Vanderbilt. For Rafa, the shot. And it goes off the stick to the corner. Back out to Luke Shen. Quick shot is blocked. Into the slot. Rafa backhander, but it drifted wide toward the corner. Vanderbilt after Ennis. Good work by Rafa and Vanderbilt as they keep the... Sabres pinned in. Hall gets the puck back. Along. Vanderbilt grabbed and tackled. No penalty on that. He gets the puck and fires it to the corner. Now Luke Shen a shot. Save and Roth couldn't gather the rebound. Back to Shen. Well, fired in along the wall. It'll spin all the way around. Flyers are in the middle of changing now. Teaming in. Putting that puck by the net. Oh, Vanderbilt with no glove on one hand. Able to backhand. And Enroth has to cover up. And now pushing and shoving in front. Cavalier trading some jabs. And through all of that, Chris Vandevelde working without his left glove on, it had fallen off and ended up in the net behind Enroth. There was no way he was getting it back. There he is fishing it out now. That's when he lost his glove. He kept playing. He, he realized, he looked around for it and realized no chance. Oh, man. Yes. He is frustrated. Now he's under Seltzer paid. Yeah, Seltzer was a, he figured he had him in a pretty good position, and Vanderbilt, he really fooled him by just all of a sudden coming back with an upper body that just nailed Seltzer. But, you know, that whole event, that great forechecking, all was done on the initiating of Raffle on the initial forecheck, stripping the puck, and then everything seemed to happen. Fires win the draw, Grossman. Oh, Jake Voracek hammered into the boards by Ott. Puck down the ice shot. Hudson off the post. It stayed out. I'm not sure if Mason got a piece as well. Now another huge hit by Ott on Grossman. One on Voracek stung him, but Jake's still on the ice. Appears to be okay. Now the pass at Hodgson again. Drops it back down. Center. Tip and they score. D'Agostini. the captain of the Sabres, and he just had himself a whale of a shift. Eventually leads to the goal by D'Agostini. Sabres up 2-1. Two crushing hits by Steve Ott. One of them on Grossman. The first one was on Voracek. And watch D'Agostini right here. He just died enough to be able to redirect that puck. Mason coming off the pipe, not in time. D'Agostini picks up the go-ahead goal right now for the Buffalo Sabres, but Ott started it all by having some words with the bench for the Philadelphia Flyers. Got all fired up and then went out and took the two body check. D'Agostini has the goal. Sabres have the lead again. Well, Steve Ott stirs the pot quite often. He is the Sabres captain. He doesn't necessarily lead them offensively, but he usually leads them in the hit parade and also in 
goading other people into taking penalties, but he made a heck of a play after his two big hits to give the Sabres this two to one lead. Beautiful pass to Matt D'Agostini. Matt D'Agostini's second goal as a Sabre. It was with the Penguins when the season started. Came over as a waiver claim. The assist he had on Hodgson's goal was his 100th NHL point. I think he'll probably remember number 101 more than number 100. That goal was beauty with a dive to poke it past Mason. So the Flyers have to find a way to get this even again. Here's Simmons. And to get away from Kanapka. Here's the puck to Hartnell. Hartnell centering. It goes all the way out to the point. Luke Shen to Mazaros. Flips one. Oh, that went off the glove of Kanapka and just wide. Here's Braden Chen getting it back to his brother. Luke across to Mazaros. Floats one. That's blocked. Hartnell able to get it back to Mazaros. He'll fake the shot. And now take a wrister. And Roth juggles that one, but is able to make the save and then jump on top of it. Well, let's take a look at our Toyota turning point. I had mentioned about Steve Audience had a little words with the bench for the Philadelphia Flyers. Then the very next shift, he goes out and he got the big body check on Jake Borchek right there. That's on one side of the ice. Then he grabs Grossman on the other, another big one, and then the pass to Matt D'Agostini right here. As you can see, D'Agostini did a great job of just lunging to be able to redirect that puck under Steve. Mason. Shot by Tiemann and off the draw, and the save made by Enroth, and the rebound was out there. I just could not get to it. Coburn looking for Voracek, bounces off him across ice. He's able to drag it down himself. And now Vora checked a raffle. Puck off of his stick. He'll just take the shot that goes wide. Coburn backhands it, but that goes up into the crowd. Well, don't forget the Adirondack Phantoms are going to face off against the Hershey Bears at the Wells Fargo Center on Saturday, February the 1st. If you have any Phantoms memories, you can relive them by calling 1-800-298-4200 to get game tickets starting as low as $10. That's a 1 o'clock start on February the 1st. It's going to be a, a lot of fun. For sure. Future Flyers there. I told you in one of our recent telecasts about Cal Heater and how well he's been playing in net. Terry Murray's got that team playing very well defensively. They'll win some games that way. Weber, the pass to Linus Omark, and he'll send it into the Philadelphia zone. Mason keeps it away from an onrushing saber. The puck bounces into the skates of Omark. Chop taken by Leno, but the Flyers have it. Here's Couturier from the red line. He'll ram it into the Buffalo zone. And Roth is out. Puts it up the glass off the glove of Omark. Now Buffalo has it. It's stabbed out to the neutral zone. Roseman from the red line right back in. 11 minutes, 35 seconds remaining in this third period. This will be icing against Buffalo. Flyers, offensive zone drawn, trying to find a way to go to the attack. As long as Zenon Kanapka is rested enough to take the draw for the Sabres, the Sabres, so far at least in this game, aren't afraid to take faceoffs on their own end with Kanapka going 12 and 0 through two periods. He can be dominant on draws. I mean, he came in at uh, over 60%. And uh, one of the scouting reports says that Kanapka can win faceoffs and he can fight. That's all he brings to the table. But enough teams seem to like it. He's with his seventh team. So there have been teams that have wanted those qualities. And he certainly helped the Sabres in this game with his abilities in the faceoff circle. This will be another icing against Buffalo. So they'll have to face it off again down there. Kanapka. To watch the bench. Kimo Timonen heading to his fifth Olympics. If you look at Kanapka, Kimo stating this week that uh, there's no question this will be his last Olympic experience. We're really looking forward to it. Team Finland, one time shot there, and that one takes off. As they have hit a stick, Hoban could not get that one on target. Weber has the puck. The save nudges it along. Pushed it ahead, but did not get it past Voracek. Now Raffles lost his stick. Leno able to maneuver it to the neutral zone. Flynn ahead. That one ends up going all the way down the ice. No icing this time. 
Flyers are back. Fort Sabres are changing. Here's Voracek with some ice to work with. The right wing feed for Giroux. In across the line. Giroux waits. Fires. Save. And Roth rebound right out into the slot. Flyers couldn't quite get there. Here's Voracek for Giroux behind the net. Trying to spin it out in front. Ends up on the seat of his pants. And the Sabres end up with the puck. Boy, Buffalo does a really good job of making sure you don't get that second opportunity. They close it off in front of Enroth really well. Drew went to the bench awkwardly after spinning to the ice on that centering attempt. Here's Ennis. Ennis making it back out. McBain across. McNabb makes it wide on purpose. The Flyers will track it down. Jay Rosehill. Moves it up off the stick of Vandevelde, but it bounces back to Gergensen's. Sabres gain control as we hit the midpoint of period number three. Oh, my. Matt D'Agostini has the Sabres on top. Luke Shen lugs to center. Pass off the stick of Rose. All in on the fourth check. Airhoff barreled into by Vandevelde. D'Agostini's there to try to clear Makes its way toward the line and now is batted out to the neutral zone. And only racing across ice to tie up to Agostini with the puck hook beyond Grossman by Hodgson. Strike. There comes on. Strike able to pull up in front of that check for the most part. The puck out to right. center and Vandevelde will bounce it in to the right of Enron. Zubat seemed to perhaps save some of his energy for this third period. It wasn't as rambunctious as he usually is for the first two periods, but uh, making his presence felt physically and in other ways here in the third. His shift at this point, the turning point of the game. Here is Simmons in. Down behind, Simmons looking, and I think he went to drop that off the team at him, but they missed the action there. Cardinal keeps that puck alive. Simmons barrels back into the pile, the puck out of his reach. And Marcus Foligno will clear the Sabres. Since the halfway point of the game, have done a pretty good job of outnumbering the Flyers on the puck when the Flyers are in the Sabres zone. There they are again, yep. coming up with it, outnumbering. That was Kanapka getting back to give them the advantage. This, though, will be icing again against Buffalo. Don't forget the Flyers take on the Nashville Predators. That's coming up this Thursday, 7 o'clock. It's Super Pretzel, Dollar Pretzel Night. Great seats are still available, so just call or visit. PhiladelphiaFlyers.com now. Nashville in on Thursday. The Islanders Saturday. We'll start a home and home series with the Islanders, who up until tonight have been playing some real good hockey. They were down 4 1 against Florida last check. Now it's 4 2, I understand. Rangers have lost in regulation to Tampa Bay 2-1, so the Flyers could hop back above them in the standings if they win. But they have 8.20 left here. They're down a goal. Mazaros ahead. Reed. Nice pass to Couturier. Couturier the shot! And Roth fought that off. Luke Shen fires one right up into the midsection and into the chest of uh, Van Roth. And he'll hang on to that. 8.07 remaining. Period number three. 2-1 Buffalo, third period coming up after the post-game show. Chevy Malibu Sports Night. Let's send you back to Philadelphia for a preview. Here's Ron Burke and Danny Pamels. Hey, J.J., as you know, the Eagles are now into their offseason as the NFL playoffs move on. But the Eagles moving on as well in a different way because uh, they have to look toward the 2014 season and figure out how to make the team better and so that it can compete deeper into the playoffs next year. Derek Gunn speaks with the Eagles brass about what plans they have going forward. And suddenly the Eagles are bursting at the seams with pro bowlers. We'll tell you who's joining LaShawn McCoy and Nick Foles in Hawaii. All that coming up after our Flyers coverage on Chevrolet Sports Night. Until then, let's send it back to Buffalo to J.J., Bill Clement, and Coatsy. Thank you very much. As we look at Teddy Dolan on the left and Craig Ruby on the right, and uh, this is their second meeting of this year and it was the first time that two native Canadians and citizens of North America had been coaches in the same hockey game in the National Hockey League and this will be the second time as you can see them shaking hands prior to that first game. Well look out here steal Matt Molson quick shot Mason ain't got a piece of that to keep it out of the net. As the Flyers down one can ill afford to fall down two as Sabres rare instance where they were pressing some but now the Flyers have the puck. Voracek to Giroux. Giroux in across the line. Got it back to Voracek. Good knife his way through and 
The Sabres looking for it. Molson tipped it right back into the skates of Voracek. Jake steals it. Jake got it in front. The shot. Raffle. And it's kicked out of there. Wow. Raffle point blank. Could not get it through. And now the puck back out into center. And the Sabres send it deep. Flyers certainly pressing. They've had seven games this season that they've trailed in the third period. And they've come back to win. It's just too shy of a club record for an entire season. They'd love to make it eight right here tonight. But seven minutes is all that remains here in the third period. Grossman for Hartnell. He'll float one to the corner, but Ott is there. Ott braces himself for the hit, and he ends up going down as Braden Shen got him. The puck bounces free to Simmons. To Mazaros, he'll fire! That one deflected and went wide. Braden Shen is checked. Simmons helps him out. Back out, Mazaros. Another shot went wide. Side of the net, they get it in front. They whip it in, they score! Braden Shen in the right spot at the right time. Rams at home, and they've tied it at two. What of a broken play, but it counts. Braden Shen scores for a case of Tasty King. Oh, part broken and part brilliant. Braden Shen knew he'd have a chance to get this into the net because Enroth was down. He just had to figure out a way to spin around in time to beat Enroth. Oh, that's a magnificent play by Braden Shen to be able to spin and release at the right time. Oh, and he had a little bit of a luck, too, because you see Enroth, he's going to be right there off the pipe. He's going to try to whoa, right across, come across that crease area, but he runs into his defenseman, or his defenseman runs into him. That lock, the ability to be able to get over to that pipe and allowed Shen the extra time to do that spinorama. And I think as you can see from that one angle, great look from our guys. He actually fired it back into the goalie a little, but it got underneath There's no question in my mind Shenner was going for the armpit. I mean, he was going for the armpit shot. That's exactly what he was doing. Okay. Okay. That's his story. He's sticking to it. Look out. Two on one. Omar with the puck. The pass. Flynn shot is blocked. Couturier will tip it back out to the neutral zone. Whoa. Luke Shen like to have that one back. You don't want to let or get caught up ice and allow the Sabres to come back with a two on one like they did there. They did not get the shot through, but. An anxious moment for the Flyers. 5.45 remaining in the third. It is tied at two. Mazaros stepping to center, then circles back. This is give to Coker. Over and ahead. Voracek could not hang on. Felino couldn't do much with that. And now Raffle twisted into the Buffalo zone. Back is McBain. Up the wall. Slid out to center by Matt Ellis. Gotten back by Coburn. Aiden Coburn drifting and then goes across ice. Giroux with speed, pumps it into the Buffalo zone and chases. McBain the first to it though, and he turns away from Giroux and moves it ahead nicely, but then the Flyers get back. And a nice play by Raffle to steal and dump it back into the Buffalo zone. Pass ahead for Gergensen's. He'll go rink wide. Move on in, that shot. Save made Mason, and he's barreled into penalty. Mason gets steamrolled, and the Flyers, I believe, wind up with a power play. 4.54 remaining in this third period. Braden Shen. Now 12 on the air. Spin, fire, go for that armpit. <laughs>Tonight's Flyers Sabres game was brought to you by Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. By Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And by Wells Fargo, when you're considering buying your first home, Wells Fargo is with you. Wells Fargo, together we go far. You are home. The UFO over yeah, Buffalo there. Yeah, the move. It's on the move. The Flyers with a huge chance here. And knocked off for goalie interference. Power play number six. And now Ott is without a stick. So the Flyers, if they can get control here, but they can't. It's cleared all the way down by Pezik. And so Sabres will get player out there with a stick in his hands. And the Flyers have to move back here in the five on fours. Giroux firing for Hartnell. Hartnell will go after the wall, Giroux diving to get that to team it in. Good play there. That looked like it was going to be cleared down the ice. Now they're set up. Giroux has a look. Being across ice at the moment goes Simmons side and then in front. Hard no shot. He scores! 
a laser from Scott Hartnell. And the power play strikes again. It's 3-2 Philadelphia. Hartnell scoring for a case of Tasty Cake. There are almost too many good plays to describe. There were so many good things that happened in this sequence, starting with Claude Giroux saving the puck at one point back to Timonen. And then when it got down low to Simmons, he knew exactly where he was going with it. Let me tell you that this was designed during our break when Craig Berube brought everybody over and Hardnell was saying, I can get open if we get the puck down low. This was planned, that whole situation where Giroux gets the puck down below the goal line to Simmons, then back out to the slot. And boy, I'll tell you what, isn't that perfect when you have that ability to be able to design it and then go execute it? Well, the Flyers have the lead for the first time tonight with less than four minutes now to play here in the third. Gavalier gets to Reed. Matt Reed backhands it. It's cut off by McNabb, and he'll bounce one to center past Dennis. Grossman has to settle that puck down. Spins it to Coburn ahead for Le Cavalier. And from the red line, he'll backhand in. I go from Simmons and Giroux at 15-53. The Flyers power play on the road again. A weapon as they have tallied twice. Mark a shot that went wide. A tricky little shot there. Eroff keeps the puck in. Got it in the slot. Down low shot. They score. And it's got it through Mason. And we're tied again. This time at three. Not going to be that easy. Flyers a little sloppy in their own end. And the Sabres' top offensive trio making them pay. Too many Sabres wide open. And Ennis from a sharp angle was able to squeeze this one through Steve Mason. I think it might have ended up being a five-hole goal. Coachy, did you see it at all? It, you know what? Right there you can see that's it goes down to that butterfly. That's the second time we've seen that where I believe it was a... Five-hole goal. Now, Ennis, when you could see him, he was just tapping his stick, looking for that pass. He was wide open, left-hand shot. We had talked to Borchek about that. We had the opportunity to take the one-timer, and we're tied at three. And less than a minute separating the two goals. The Flyers' lead did not last very long at all. 54 seconds is a point shot. Mason, the glove, saved there through traffic. Agostini wound up down on the ice. Crowd wants a penalty. They won't get that. Eroff was thinking maybe the Sabres back on top. Well, let's take a look at our power back. Rehabilitation, comeback goal of the game. It was 2-1 to one for the Buffalo Sabres, and all of a sudden, Brad Chen, look at this. Eroff gets tied up with his defenseman, and he spins around and ties the game, and that's our second power back rehabilitation goal of this hockey, which tells you the Flyers just keep fighting back, keep fighting back, but they got a little bit of problem now with that goal by Ennis. Off the face-off, Giroux and Leno, former teammates battling. Giroux trying to dig that puck out of there, and he did. He got it ahead, and now backhands, but it never did get out of the zone. Now he's got it again. And Giroux will move it ahead to Voracek, gaining the Buffalo line. Voracek all the way across, Grossman winds and fires, and he waited too long. Leno got his stick in there to deflect it out of play. Boy, you don't see Nick Grossman waving his stick and then smacking it on the ice, giving him the beaver tail, saying, I want it, and I want it now. But he jumped up in the play. And that play, the way, the play he made the other night, where he faked the shot, slid one through. Who did he slide that through to? Nick Grossman with his fake shot. Uh, Braden Shannon, the game winner yeah, in New game Jersey, winner. yeah. You asked me to go three games back, Bill. That's beyond my statute of limitations. I think it was about time to test you. <laughs> yeah, up in New Jersey in the overtime winner. Le Collier, someone in front, and redirected it, and Roth has to sprawl to keep it out. It went off a saber, I believe, in front, and Enroth then looked like a fish out of water just trying to get back in position to keep that puck out of the net. Whoa. And Wes McCauley was right there. This is when you least expect it. You see Enron, he's going to react. He, he just threw a stick. Watch, I don't care. I'll get this puck. He just throw a stick and make sure he got the blocker on it. And it was heading in the right direction. And as I said, Wes McCauley right in the right spot. 
Fires after the puck again. We've seen that Dominic Hasek imitation from Enroth a couple times here tonight. Katrina is shot! And perhaps the save there, or hit with Cavalier, it stayed out. Pressure from the Flyers here, just over two minutes remaining in the third. That pass from Reed intercepted and cleared all the way down by Buffalo. This will be icing. Two minutes exactly remaining in regulation time. Gives a chance to check out our Mazda top shelf performers in this one here in Buffalo. Didn't think there were going to be this many goals scored, at least by the Sabres. Cardinal Simmons, Voracek. They're putting up numbers. Cody Hodson, Matt D'Agostini. Steve Ott with a couple of assists. Jonas Enroth, the little guy in goal for Buffalo, has been pretty darn good. Deflection shot there. It went off of Hartnell and bounced just wide after Coburn flipped it toward the net. Now Braden Coburn looking forward to his own line, and it goes off a stick and out of play. Boy, that was a great job by Hartnell because he's got... He's facing the goalie, but he sees the puck coming, and somehow he gets a stick on it and does a great job of redirecting. It's just missed the net. Changed the point of release a little bit. Oh, good deflection oh. by Scott Hartnell. Man. Yeah, the Sabres able to win the neutral zone draw, but Weber then fired it into the Philadelphia bench. So another face-off in center. The Sabres have allowed more than two goals here at home for the first time in their last nine games. And Jonas Enroth thrown it the second time this season. It's right. his 14th game. Has three goals in front of him. That only happened one other time, and it's his only win. Jonas Enroth, not once since late October, but he's played very well. This must seem like a bonanza to him here. Simmons banking it ahead. Too far for Shen. Right back to the Philadelphia line. They spread out. The pass goes into the slot for the shot. And D'Agostini's bid went off a stick into the safety netting. Whoa, the Flyers got a little bit of a mix up on that line change. Braden Shen wanted to change. The Sabres were going back into the zone, so they didn't decide right to the last second. Shen had to jump back in to be able to help out, but by that time, the Sabres had the opportunity with the shot. The long band in their own zone because of that. Simmons able to get his stick on that to deflect it out of play. Nice pass from Steve Ott. It was a pretty darn good third period here. Now Roffel trying to catch up to that puck in center. Could not. Sabres will dump it in. Sprite has to hustle back. And keep it away from the Sabres. Could not, but the Flyers intercept it. Here's Giroux. Giroux moving up from the red line. We'll play it in and hope for four at check. But Zerhoff getting there first. Now Roffel. Apple cut off by Leno, who steals the puck. They'll whip it up the boards. Grossman's there, and he does keep it in, but it bounces high in the air, and now Flynn will just shovel it out to the neutral zone. Into the final minute. 46 seconds remaining in the third. And Leno is able to sail that one into the Philadelphia zone. Both teams making perhaps their last change of regulation right here. Grossman to Couturier. Up the right wing boards. Couture with speed and across the line will roll it deep and be the first to it behind the net. Protects the puck. Couture banking it back out to Timonen. Timonen winds and fires his block. Goes in the slot shot save. Rebound. Couture hit the side of the net. It's still loose. Dug loose by Reed to Le Cavalier shot. He scores! Vinny Le Cavalier able to bury it with just 14.8 seconds remaining and the Flyers are on top again. Le Cavalier ending the 13-game goal is Trout at a perfect time as he scores for a case of Tasty King. Boy, what a rush. Not only an emotional rush, but a hockey rush. All the way out of the Flyers' end, Sean Couturier got it started, then once set up, Vinny Le Cavalier drilled that one. Couturier just missed ending the flurry with a sharp angle shot. And when it went back to Le Cavalier, he just ripped this one home. I don't think Jonas Enroth ever really recovered and was in good shape for the Le Cavalier shot. Terrific pass by Matt Reed right here. He dished it back. Wow, what pressure. It all started with the rush down ice by Sean Couturier and Vinny Le Cavalier. Yeah, that sigh of relief we all heard was Vinny. <laughs> Well, if you're going to have a drought and you're going to break it, that's the way to break it. A potential game-winning goal still at 14.8 seconds remaining. Ted Nolan has called timeout here. But 
I mean, that, that's the way you want to break. You don't want to break it with like an empty net goal or a goal in a route. How about with 14 seconds remaining to break a tie? Why not? And so Greg Berube's team now at this point just needs to try to close this out as Ted Nolan trying to design some late third period strategy. Sends his team back out. Well, with just 14 seconds, there's two ways to do it. Obviously, Kateri would like to win it back, give it to to the defense, either Coburn or Tiemann, and just bank it off the, the wall, and it'd be pretty well done. But you could also go forward with it, too. Surprisingly to me, Enroth is out there, so they'll only pull him now that they have control of the puck. He's hesitating. Now he gets to the bench, but the Flyers get the puck. Seven seconds. Tiemann will play it back. Couturier lifts it out to center ice. Three seconds. The whistle. Play is stopped. I think the puck hit one of the Flyers' gloves along the bench. Something along the Flyers' bench. And they're going to say the faceoff's going to go all the way back into the Philadelphia zone. 1.3 remaining. So hold on. They'll have a faceoff. Goalie pulled now. I think they put, might put some time back on the clock, too. Yeah, that's what they're going to check now. They're going to go over to the bench and see uh, exactly how much time is remaining. Wes McCauley is... Put the headset on over by the scores bench. So they could have a little more than 1.3 to try to work something off of this faceoff. Well, Giroux will take the draw once they drop the puck for Philadelphia. And of course, it's Zenin Kanapka who. This game uh, is 15 of 20 on draws. So it's Kanapka who will take the face off. He's trying to redeem himself too because he was in the box for goalie interference when the Flyers scored the go ahead goal at 3 to 2. Power play goal. Cavalier from Reed and Couturier. 1945 as Philadelphia on top. Now we see if they put more time back on the clock. 3.5 seconds. So That's what it was when I looked up. Yeah. So there's time here. Flyers have to shut this down. Kanapka against Giroud. Puck is down. That's how you do rolls. it. Kanapka the puck to the corner. And that's it. Flyers back on the winning side of the ledger as they come from behind and beat Buffalo 4-3 to three. and the Sabres their first regulation loss at home in their last nine games and the Flyers get victory number 24 in the year and start moving back up in those Metropolitan Division standings. Well we should have known the Flyers had the Sabres right where they wanted them as soon as they trailed in the third period. But our Bud Light player of the game is number 40 of the Flyers. Vincent LeCavalier picked up his 500th assist in New York, his 62nd career game-winning goal, and second this season is the game winner right here in Buffalo. Vinny LeCavalier, our Bud Light player of the game. Well done, Vinny. And as you said, a sigh of relief for Vinny LeCavalier. For the Flyers, their eighth win this season in which they trailed at some point in the third period. They are now just one shy of the club record for an entire season in that situation. So the Flyers get a huge win here in Buffalo and head home with some momentum again. And they'll welcome the Nashville Predators on Thursday night at the Wells Fargo Center. Our coverage on Comcast Sports that begins the Flyers pregame live at 6.30. Flyers trying to redeem themselves after a lost weekend, and they did just that. They come from behind, 4-3 win here tonight. For the entire crew, as well as my partners, Bill Clement and Steve Coates, I'm Jim Jackson. Good night for Buffalo. Stay tuned now for Flyers Post Game Live, presented by McDonald's.